podcast, and today's guest is Polly Aronson, who How do you? recently won a YCS and has many other accomplishments. I'm going to ask him to list after a word from our sponsors. Anyway, just want to announce that I have a Patreon, and as you know, I'm very bad about uploading, but every time I have an episode, I put it on Patreon right away. So if you don't want to wait like a month for Jesse Cotton to come out, just freaking subscribe to my Patreon. It's two bucks. You get access to every episode way before everyone else. Think about it. I'm broke. I need to go to YCS. Help me out, please. Thank you. Uh, we're also on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, etc. So like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment, etc. So... We are going to start by having Polly introduce themselves. Hello, guys. I'm Polly. Uh, if you guys follow like DB content or like online the com- online competitive scene, you know who I am. Otherwise, you might not. Um, but um, I yeah, I uh, a member of Lug Free Gaming. You guys probably know my team. Um, I uh, I guess I can't say Honey's team anymore, but um, that's my it's, boy. It's Polly's team now. It's Polly's uh, team. I. I think technically I might be the longest, like, the member who's been on the team the longest now, which is, like, sad. But, uh, yeah, no, um, I've been playing the game for a very long time. Um, I didn't, uh, about 15 years. I started going to locals in 2006. I've been going to locals ever since 2006. Also very sad. (laughs) But, um, uh, yeah, I, I didn't really travel that much, aside from, like, maybe, like, one or two events per year until, like, around... Uh, maybe like right, basically like a year or two before COVID, and then like I had just finally started traveling more, and then COVID happened. Um, and then yeah, so now that that's over, I'm trying to hit a lot more events than I used to. So I'll be at Mini and Cali and whatever else they throw at us. But uh, yeah, I was very into the remote duel scene during COVID. Still am. Remote duels are lots of fun. Uh, and <coughs> I won the remote duel YCS in February. <laughs> oh, what happened? Oh no, I was coughing because I hate remote duels. Uh, what? You hate remote duels? Oh, oh my, my goodness, I love I love remote duels. Okay, I be know real me. though. Be real though. How many people are honest civilians in a remote duel? So, okay, that's the funny thing. I always like get into this like discussion with people. People there, there's like this stigma that remote duels has like a lot of cheating or like and like or like uh disingenuous conduct there's only been one time i genuinely thought my opponent was trying to cheat me remote duels with stacking um i think so it's like in any game and in any like format and any like arena play there's always going to be the capacity to like take to like take advantage of the opponent or cheat right it's like remote duels doesn't that doesn't magically exist just because of remote duels so if people are going to attempt to cheat they're going to attempt that they're going to find ways to cheat irl remote like whatever it is um i don't think I have not honestly experienced more cheating in remote duels than IRL. I, the, I would actually go as far to say that, at least like especially during the COVID period, when it, especially when it first started, like the average re- most remote duel players were really really friendly. It was kind of like in the beginning, like everyone had this understanding that like yes, the ability ex- like the capacity exists to like potentially cheat, and like we're not going to because that would ruin like that. This is the only thing we have to actually have organized play right now, and I think like a very like positive culture arose from that in the beginning and even today i still don't i still don't feel like there's a lot like bad behavior in remote duels any I, I think there's more in person but that's my that's my opinion i really i've had only good experiences with remote duels um and most yeah. of most of people i know who do a lot of remote dueling feel the same way i did hella remote dueling because like that's when i started playing was like during the pandemic oh really so that's like all i had and like yeah i think i remember okay. even a couple times. you what yeah, yeah, it was okay, but I definitely had some really bad experiences because really, when you're in a remote duel, it's just you and your opponent alone, and I will let your imagination dictate what that experience is like. Like, for example, I had this guy that um, we're in a remote duel, it was a Draytron mirror match, and he was like really agitated. Like, I asked him to, um, I always do, uh, like, oh, could you cut half and top 12 to the bottom? That's the pot of desires cut. Um, and I asked him to do that, and he said, wow! And I was like, "Uh uh-oh. 
Um, what? So then, like, uh, he he had uh, one material on Fafnir, and he detached it to negate a spell. And then I didn't know he only had one material. I thought he maybe had two, so I asked him if it was once per turn. And then he was like, oh, it's not once per turn. And I was like, really? I don't know if it is. And then I was like, oh, wait a second, you only have one material. So it doesn't matter. And he's like, that's what I said. And he got really mad. Um, and a judge was there. And I, uh, he started yelling at me. And I told him, well, you need to chill down. And then the judge gave both of us a warning. Um, which I'm still bitter about. And Damn. then, like, the good thing is, though, the judge, like, stayed with me. Because I, I asked the judge. I was like, please don't leave. I don't feel comfortable. And, like, this yeah. guy was just so aggressive and uncomfortable that I was like, I wish this was, like, a real-life event. Because then I'd be surrounded by people instead of holding mm, I, this judge hostage. Uh, so. I mean, the, no, judges, I think even I, like, I've heard a lot of stories where judges, like, won't stay when you ask them to, but then a lot of stories where they will. So I think even in person, you're allowed to ask a judge to like, like usually it's in regards to time, like at the end of the match when you, if your favorite opponent's gonna like slow play, like you can ask a judge to like stay. But yeah, I'm sorry that uh, experience happened. Yeah, that's like that's so weird. I've never, I always worry when I ask my opponent to cut. Like I always in the back of my head wondered if like one day someone's gonna be like, like act weird, like oh why are you making me cut so many cards? I've, I've that that's funny that that actually happened to you. Because I've never had it happen. And all the times I always, like, wondered if that was going to happen one day. I've never had that happen. But you did. And I'm sorry. But Very bad the, luck. The good news about <laughs> that experience is that I, I beat him in, like, eight minutes. So oh. um, I just did a nice. swift 2-0. So that made up for the bad experience. And I was like, okay, yeah. But um, I don't know. <laughs> just, like, the concept of being alone in a room with a random Yu-Gi-Oh player just freaks me out. And that's yeah. what remote well dueling is. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. There's usually like, well, I usually have like a couple of watchers in the room, but I guess that's not like I shouldn't say that that's always the case. So I guess that's that's fair. That's fair. Well, or you're the like a watch. good player, so people want to watch you to like see what you're doing and see the text and that's... and stuff like that. But I'm just a fifth rate duelist, like. You, you know, know, I keep thinking about that on an unrelated topic. The fifth rate duelist. Where did the fourth rate duelist go? You know, and the third rate duelist. We have the fifth rate duelist, but how? Why? Why five? Why not the sixth rate duelist? How did we settle on the fifth rate duelist? Okay, so basically, like you know the meme, like you're a third rate duelist with a fourth rate deck. So yeah. like I put that oh. in, and that was taken, and then I didn't like fourth rate oh. duelist because I thought it was too close to the, you know, you're a third rate duelist for a fourth rate deck. So I, I put in fifth rate through list and no one took that handle. This was on Twitter. And then I was like, oh, oh my God, like, I really like the ring of fifth rate duelist. Like, I was just like, I like this a lot. And like, I, I definitely wanted like a self disparaging username because I knew that people were going to come at me and say that I suck at Yu-Gi-Oh. So I wanted to be one step ahead and be like, I know <laughs> that's what I named myself. Like. You're stupid for thinking that I don't know. I suck at Yu-Gi-Oh. Go feel bad about yourself. It's like a defense mechanism. I gotcha. I gotcha. So that's the thir third rate duelist was already taken on Twitter. So I'm curious. You get asked that. Have, have you been asked that question before of, of why you that that I asked you about why you settled on the fifth rate? Uh no, no one's asked me. No one I interview ever asks me questions. They just talk really? about themselves. What? Oh my and god. And I, I usually feel I feel very comfortable with you, but I usually don't feel comfortable with my guests. So I don't oh. usually like talk very much. I just ask the questions and then just wait for it to oh. be over. But I'm you seem sorry. to be I, chill. I I talk a lot either way, so you yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. This I is dope. This is dope. I feel good. I feel comfortable right now. Uh oh, where'd your face go? Uh-oh. Oh no, Polly got disconnected. Also, my mouse died. Polly! Come back to us! Uh, hey guys! We're gonna put in a commercial here because I don't know where my guest is. Imagine if this was like a remote duel. That would suck. Okay guys, we're gonna get Polly back. Just give me a moment. Just give me a moment. Polly, 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 Polly. Okay, he just DM'd me. Um. Okay, now he. Alright. 
Uh, what's the deal with Discord? LOL. No commercials for subs. Oh, I meant like the commercial that I'm gonna like insert into this. I'd be like, I said hi. No, I'm so I'm sorry. I can't respond to chat when I'm in an interview because it's weird for the listeners for me to be like, oh, hey, what's up? Okay, note to self, like, do I have a mod that knows how to do a marker so we can edit this out? Because, like, yeah, we're going to edit this out. I'll forgive you this time. This time. Let me turn down my light. It's very bright. Ugh. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Dun, 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 Oh, wait. This is part of being a streamer. I have to be impulsive and entertaining at all times. Look at me. I'm Zara Khan, and I'm a fifth-rate duelist with a sixth-rate deck. Biatch. I be taking you down. Let's go. Ah, uh, we have six people here. What happened to the days when I had 70 viewers consistently? What happened? What did I do wrong besides stop streaming because I got really depressed? What can I do again? How can I... Hello? Okay. All right. Hello. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Let me, uh, let me... Okay, so... What's up, guys? We are back with Polly again. We had a, a remote dual disconnect, and Polly got a game loss. So, <laughs> I won. Um, that's basically that what happened. Exactly what happened. <laughs> this, no, that, you don't know how often this happens to me. This, 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 is, this is a problem. I'm, I'm good at playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm not good at using common sense in the things that surround playing Yu-Gi-Oh! My phone dies in the- I have had my phone die in the middle of a remote duel so many times. Like, oh, man. you'd think I'd remember to keep it plugged in, and I just don't. And yes, my phone died, and now it's plugged in, and I'm back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He still won a YCS, a remote dual YCS. That's the one you won, right? <laughs> yes, I won the, the last remote dual YCS they did in, in February. With, on my phone. I, same phone, same. I, I used, I run Discord on my phone. I don't even use a computer. Like, I did the entire thing on my phone at that oh, YCS. Wow. wow. That's yeah. Nice. Wait, did you play against Walter in the finals, or was that someone else? No, I played against uh, Aaron Pastrana. Uh, Walter, no, I didn't play Walter. Walter Jewel? Yeah, Walter Jewel, because he, he, oh, I think that was in January, actually. You won in February, right? Yep, yep, there was there was a January one in uh, Sword Soul format, um, the February, and then the February one was the last one. Okay, you know what I heard about your deck that you won the YCS with? I heard a bunch of people talking about it, saying that they tried it, and they kept, like, bricking like crazy, and they're like, they said they don't know how Polly won with this list. So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, as the, so, later on in the format, like, maybe, like, a month later, it, it like, there were definitely better, I think Prank Kid kind of just came to be accepted as, like, a more consistent, like, deck that was able to utilize the Adventure Engine. Um, but I do think at that event, like, base was, a, was, it, it it okay. There's there were a lot of bricks in the deck, but like the combo itself was just so high ceiling that it kind of just made up for it. Um, as at the time, because people weren't playing prank kids yet, like it was just I do think it was just a high ceiling deck. Um, the consistency like there's game there were games you bricked, but like I don't know, it didn't like there were games where I bricked one game out of the match, let's say, but was still able to win the match or like print. Um, yeah, I like I don't know. It, it, it had bricks, but, like, the 60 cards also helps, like, I'm a big fan of 60, of, like, playing a higher card count to dilute the ratio of, like, bricks in the deck, and, like, the, I don't know, I, I don't know what to really say to those people, because, like, it, it, the deck was, it was consistent enough to, like, win, until, like, until, as I said, like, I feel like once people, like, optimized the Prank Kid builds to where, like, Prank Kid was just, like, a better version of the deck, at that point, like, yeah, you shouldn't be playing base because like you're just a better version of the deck. But I don't know. At that point in time, people weren't even playing like DP the DPE engine in prank kids, and like I do, I still believe base was the best deck for that event. Um, 
there were like okay. a lot of European players who had been working on the deck like in the week or two leading up to, to that remote dual ICS. And like it was it was it wasn't just a random deck that we put together. It was seeing a lot of play online. Like the week before that event, like half the matches I played in online tournaments in like DRG and luxury events were like that deck. I played like so many of your matches the week. But like IRL and in remote duels, it hadn't really trickled down yet to the broader community. And like like so people were like, Oh, what's this new deck? But it had already been kind of like out there for like the week prior. Um Gosh, what's his name? The the guy who built the deck, a member of Team Disciples in Europe, who he, he, he I think uploaded a deck profile of the deck the week before, and like that's kind of what we, me and my friend Brad, who I built the deck with, we kind of took his list and modified it and worked on it for the YCS. Um, we put Cross Up Designator in, which was like probably one of the cards that was like the best that weekend, and uh, yeah, no, but it, the deck the deck was like really hyped in the time, period of time right before that event. Um, I'm I I, w- I would say like I if like. If more players had played that deck at the event, like if I hadn't won with it, like someone I think would have won with that deck. Um, oh, as I said, without, okay. I, I do think that like prior, like I said, at that point in time, the prank game players were not playing DPE. I do think base was the best deck. I think like someone would have won that event with that deck. Um, fortunately for me, a lot of the players who had been working on it online, like people who either didn't really like remote duels as much or for whatever reason didn't play the deck that weekend. And um, like I didn't, I didn't, in that tournament, I don't think, I, I think I faced maybe like one mirror match. I think it was against um, Raph Nevins. He was playing a variant of base, uh, like round three, maybe. Um, okay. Yeah, I didn't see much mirrors. Like I said, online, I was facing so many mirrors on and on DB tournaments that week, but in the, the event, there were like just one or two. Okay. Okay. Cool. How do you prepare for an event? Um. Uh, so like, I if I can like the the week or two like leading up to the event, I just like test just as much as possible. Uh, and like D- DB. Um, I'm a big believer that like testing, just just in, there's like a general Yu-Gi-Oh principle. I think testing is far, far, far more valuable than theory. Um, a lot of people like love like talking about the game and like deck theorizing, but don't really put that much time into testing. And there's some players who do that and and do very well. But in my opinion, like especially over the years, as the game as the game has gotten more complex and as like as card design has gotten a lot more complex it's a lot harder to theorize what will be good and what won't because like like okay when every when every card had like two effects it's like it's not that hard to kind of like intuitively just visualize what a deck does but when every card has like four effects and every card in your opponent's deck has four effects you cannot just intuitively like theorize or like know how all of the interactions are going to go and like you have to just like sit down and actually like test the matchups extensively to really like so um I, I just think just testing and just testing as many things as possible like and just doing as many repetitions as possible is just very important uh so i just so yeah i just like i try to like make a list of like every deck that like or every like engine that like could possibly like be useful and just like test them all because you you can't like just with theory just you can't just know what's going to be good and what's not so just like test as many things as possible and do as many repetitions as possible and that's like kind of like what i try to do in the weeks like leading up to an event yeah i think that's really important for me that's hard for me to do because i don't have that much free time uh yeah i like i work full time i have a second job i do youtube uh i waste a lot of time on twitter i have to i i realize that sounds unimportant but like (laughs) i really like twitter uh Maybe if I stopped using Twitter, I would be a better Yu-Gi-Oh player, but, like, I made, like, a really, like, dope pun on Twitter that just, like, ruined everyone's day, and it was super worth it. You want to hear it? Okay, what do female Yu-Gi-Oh players use on their period? Vampire deck? I don't know. Maxi pads. (laughs) <laughs> and there goes my viewership <laughs> it was so bad but i was like it's so worth it and then i put a picture of that like pun dog that's like smiling after a pun and stuff i don't know i i gotta play more Yu Gi Oh. i played a lot last weekend and i learned no, a lot so you you said you have two jobs like aside from aside from Oh. You're, I mean, are you not counting stre- like did you say you do you mean like your second job is streaming or you mean like you have two actual jobs no, I have two exactly. actual jobs. Like, I have my oh, wow. full-time job, and then I'm a consultant. Um, so I do okay. that type of work. Um, cool. And then I have my streaming and Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff. Nice. Okay, you, you have a good excuse. You, 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 like, at that point, you just, like, have a legitimately valid excuse to not be able to play Yu-Gi-Oh! That <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I know, but I gotta uh, play more! And, like, 
like freaking my work block dueling book <laughs> it was just like god damn it the, my work they block dueling book on what? the internet and stuff oh and i was like how did they know so like you know there's Bro, you there's know no how many people i played a guy <laughs> in the remote tools travel games this past weekend i played one guy in giant card who was playing he, we sat down and he was like bro and i was like it's good bro and he was like i gotta tell you something i was like what's up and he's like i'm playing so the guy who's supposed to like come in after me he's like not here yet so like i'm playing you at work and like <laughs> if a customer comes i'm just gonna give you the win and i was like <laughs> i was like oh that's funny i was like no no if customer comes just like it's fine if it takes like a couple, if it takes like a minute or two like i'll just wait if it takes like three minutes then, I'll, then you give me the win that's fair but like oh we'll, we'll just do that right and so we, we he had like one or two customers we played uh, it was a good guy. He was playing Drytron. I got him. But it was funny. I was like, oh, he's literally, he's literally playing at work. Like, he helped, like, two customers, like, in the game. It was funny. Oh, man, that's funny. Yeah, it's hard to, like, play Dueling Book and do therapy at the same time. But, hey, I'm down for a challenge. Oh, are you? oh my god. You, so you're, you're a therapist? I am a therapist. Pre-licensed. Oh. I haven't gotten my license yet. I'm working on it. Okay, okay. So, yeah. I have a good friend who's, who's just started. Uh, he trains to be a therapist, too. So, cool. Cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you won that YCS. Have you won any other events? Uh, I have not. Well, I've not won any other YCSs or like any premier events. I have like three. I have three regional wins. Um, I have a bunch of like, yeah, for like three regional wins, a bunch of regional tops. Like, I forget how many, like fifteen or something like that. And then like, I I had a bunch of tops from. I don't know how many modern players are that familiar with the ARG circuit series, but like about like five to ten years ago, it was a third party company that was kind of like luxury, but much bigger. And they were doing IRL events. I was hosting IRL events for like large cash prizes. And for a period of time, they were very, very competitive and they were considered at the time premier events, like comparable with YCSs. But they oh, wow. over time, they like started losing you know, player base. And no, we don't count. People don't count those anymore. But I had a bunch of ARG tops. Now they're like regional tops, so I, I lump them with those. And okay. then, um, yeah. So I like, yeah. And then I topped Nats last month with uh, Dragon Link. Uh, lost in top 64 to Mystic Mind. Good times, <laughs> good times. Yeah, we sat down and, and we were like, oh, what's the, so what's the top 64 prize? And like, they're like, oh, the mat. It's like, oh, cool. What's the top 32 prize? And like, oh, two, pro two, co two copies of the prize card, or I think, or one copy of the prize card. The Black Luster Soldier Crystal Statue. The Black Luster Soldier exclusive play map, the sleeves, and and yeah, and like booster box or something. And they were like, oh, and what what again was the was it was the top sixty four? And they were like, oh, well, the mat. I was like, oh, nice. So if you if you lost in top sixty four, you got the mat. If you won in top sixty four, made top thirty two, you got like three grand worth of prizes probably. So oh. that was a nice mistake. <laughs> oh, right. Rip and was it pure mistake mine or just someone playing mistake? No, mine? no, it was uh, it was Sword Soul. I played against Imansu Williams, uh, from player from California. Really, really nice guy. Um, we had like really good match. We were like joking throughout the match, talking. Um, f n not to the point where we like wasted time because I'm not gonna complain about time. It was it was it was he would have gotten me regardless of time. But uh, yeah, we 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 had a good match. Really nice guy. Uh, I like playing against him, Imansu. But yeah, yeah, he was playing Sword Soul game three. I made like. A board of uh, Baron because I was playing Drag Link. It was like the end board was like Borland, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, Baron, Valor, like like double hand trap in hand, Snow Engrave, <laughs> and I discarded a Scythe off of Adventure because I was I wasn't playing um, Dagda, but I was siding the Sanctum package at Nats. Okay. Um, and so I I hard opened Scythe like as a brick. I ditched so I ditched it for Adventure, and then on his turn I tagged out the Baron for the Scythe. So it was. Oh. Yeah, so it was Borland, Hot Red, Scythe Lock, Snow, Double Hand Trap. And then I'm like, oh, like, I, I'm, I'm feeling nice, right? I'm like, oh, I'm making top of me two, let's go, because it was game three. And then I'm like, he doesn't, how, how's he going to beat this board? Even if he has, like, Dropwheeler, Dark Ruler, like, I, I have three stops through Dark Ruler, essentially, between Snow and the Hand Traps. And he goes, Mystic Mine. And I'm like, wait. And I look, and I'm like, I don't even have Savage on board. Like, I don't even have, like, a hard gate that I can negate with. I'm just like, What about yeah, Hot that, Red? Game. So uh, the way thought interaction works with Hot Red, Hard, Hot Red doesn't negate activations. It lets you target a face-up card and negate that face-up card's effects until the end of the turn. So you can chain oh. Hot Red. To you you are allowed to chain it to the activation, and the ruling is that you, you can chain it, and the mind like it'll it like it it'll resolve. It'll stay on the field, but it'll be negated till the end phase. So then for the rest of the turn, like I can still use all my other stops. 
but if he just goes to end phase, it, it goes back online and then it's oh. so. Oh. Um, Rip. Yeah. Ironically, he told me after that he also had Droplet in hand. So even if I had had Savage, he was still beating me. But oh, yeah, it was Droplet mine. You can't, can't really beat that. So. Yeah. Rip. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I remember I was in a remote duel against Altergeist, and um, I I had three twins in my deck, and like I got mined, and they were doing that thing where they would like attack with the the Melu seek and then shuffle it back. Um, oh yeah! And he was just with poking the, um, me for like five hundred or something like that, and I kept like, and I was like using Nova using emergency i was like digging for my deck and like like he ended up just killing me with this little melee seek and i look through my deck and the three twins were at the bottom of the deck and oh i was God. just like this can't be real <laughs> so like everyone always says like just draw the out but it's like you don't understand the out is well, at the bottom of the deck yeah but okay the pro okay oh my god i i I hate when people say that because it, it well one yes but I mean you can make the counter argument though though like well I mean any like any 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 card or like engine or piece you need like sometimes you're gonna see it sometimes you're not so it's not so much that it's the issue of that like there's a lot of decks that like the cards you have to play as out to Mystic Mind there's a lot of decks against which those cards are otherwise completely dead. It's like, yeah. so the fact that you're forced to put in, like, twin or cosmic... Okay, against Alter Geist, like, you're putting twin in any, anyway, so it doesn't come up there. But, like, against when combo decks side mine, and you have to put in, like, cosmic cyclone against a deck with, like, no continuous spell and traps, or, yeah. like, or, or when you're... Or, or even if they have a few, like, if they're going second, and you're gonna have to put a, a cosmic in just to out mine, when, like, that's gonna otherwise be a completely, like, dead card in that matchup, it's, like... Yeah. It, it creates... It, it just... It's problematic, cause, because it, 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 it forces you to do bad deck building or like bad siding and it's it i don't know i i don't i don't i well, think the, it's the very, counter yeah. argument is that back in the old days everyone main spell trap removal because that was part of deck building so it, the argument right. from konami i assume is well play spell trap removal and then you won't have to worry about mine <laughs> right it's just like but back in the day trap cards were a lot like more used like people played trap cards so like oh okay your spell and trap has like has like it does something and but now it's like that's a card that if they don't see mine you just have a dead card now that like and and it's just like i don't know i i, I mean and also i feel like and i guess then i guess you can make the kind of argument of like well oh well like just put in your deck anyway like it is what it is but it's just like a card just shouldn't have do a card there should not be a card that has the ability to have that much impact like if it resolves as mine does and it's like i feel like that's the exact type, that's kind of the point of a ban list right because if you don't have ban list at all then you can make the argument yeah well just there's an out so, so just play it out but like every card has an out the the point of the ban list is to check to like get rid of cards that like are recognized they're just it's like yes there might be an out there might be some way to counter it but when it, it's just too powerful it, it creates too much volatility to remain legal and be healthy and like mm -hmm. mine like archetypally embodies that like like concept better than like any other card so i don't see how they it, like if we're going to have a ban list that's the exact type of card that should be on the ban list so i i don't get it I, I, by the way i'm using the word archetypally in, in the, like the english sense rather than I'm not, i don't mean archetype in terms of like you give sense i meant it like it's the perfect example of yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. type of but yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man yeah that's one that's like i don't know i've been like calling for mind movie ban way before everyone else like, I'm like, okay. this card is toxic, and everyone's just harassed me for it. But now, like, we're on the train where it's like, the whole world, except for Konami headquarters, thinks that Mystic Mind should be banned. And yeah. it was so funny when they, because I didn't think they would. I was like, I bet you anything, guys, they are not going to ban Mystic Mind. I bet you anything. Because they want us to play spell trap removal. And, I, yeah. I was right. I had a feeling they probably... <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. What were you saying? I said I was right. Ha ha. You were right. I had a feeling <laughs> probably we're not going to ban it, but I was hoping they were. I figured it was probably like a 50 50. I, I, was, ho I was praying they would ban it, but they. Yeah. I, 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 I had a feel. I had like. I knew there was a good. Some chance they wouldn't. I was sitting in a. Uh, like a. 
pancake restaurant like by myself at a table like eating pancakes when the ban list dropped and like i got like 10 tags whenever the ban list drops you can always tell it's ban list day because like my like your photo just start buzzing like just <laughs> on ceiling and you're like okay well there's nothing in my life that's this exciting so there must have been a ban list <laughs> <laughs> and then i was just like eating my pancakes and i'm like oh. i'm like i'm like pulled up i'm like please mind please mind please mind it's like nope no mind I'm like okay i don't even want these pancakes anymore but yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Konami, you killed a man's appetite for pancakes. You are a no sick, pa- sick organization. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, I am someone who is like, I mean, I call myself fifth big do list, but I think I'm okay at the game of Yu Gi Oh! Like, I have successes here and there. Um, yeah. like, I got I like second you- place in my first regional. Um, I was going to say, I know you said you aren't able to play that much, but I think I remember like seeing your name at least one or two. Like You, you, you placed in something. What, what regional was it? It was a gamer's choice. It wasn't a regional regional. I just call it a regional because it had a 180 people. But it was the oh. gamer's okay. choice event. Okay. Um, you got you got second. Yeah, and there were a lot of really right. good players there, like Pac and Tommy and Hani and Blake and yeah, Jesus Carter. Yeah, Jesus good tournaments. Yeah, so I lost nice. the Carter. I got creamed, um, but oh that's okay. We don't talk about it. it. Was, but that was, was my. Playing first against, he was playing a Sky Striker. Deck. Yeah, he was playing Sky Striker. I was playing Drytron. Yeah, and um, it was my first big event. Like I would only gone to locals before that, so uh, it was oh. like a big deal. Like basically, I learned how to. Like I was playing Drytron. And I was getting last place at locals with it. <laughs> like, I was doing so bad. And then there was a six-hour flight to New York. And I just sat there. I did dry trunk combos over and over and over again for six hours. And that's how I learned how to play Damn. it. Oh, yeah. my God. I keep, yeah. I keep thinking you're from the East Coast for some reason. So that was... Okay, so that was... Was that during, like, COVID period? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. I that remember was that. Yeah. last July 2021. And then okay. Okay. at the San Diego Regional has 600 people. I got 18th place. Nice. And that's how okay. I got my Nats invite. So those are my accomplishments. I, I mean, I've won locals, like, a fair amount. But, like, that's not really something I usually brag about. Oh, don't say that. Yeah, I won locals. Bow down, everyone. Yeah. But anyway. Well, that's cool. <laughs> so... So, my point is, like, I would like to get better at the game, um, but I'm not really kind of sure, and, like, I really want to make it to day two at a YCS, and I'm going to YCS Minneapolis. Do you have Mm -hmm. any, like, suggestions for that process? (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, I hate, okay, I, I, so I, uh... I hate answering that question when people ask because I, I do have an answer, but it's like I feel like the answer is like it's like a sad answer. It's like I think like like I said, the, I feel like the most important thing is just just practice as much as you can, just test as much as you can, and like and it sucks to give that answer because like a lot of people just like for very legitimate reasons just don't necessarily have the time to play that much. But unfortunately, I do feel like just practicing is just the biggest thing. Um, I think like I do think like Yugi tubers help a lot with like like sharing information to like kind of like make it more efficient to like learn things without having to test but like i I find like when you learn something when someone tells you about something like about an interaction or like a useful card or something or like what play to make in a certain situation it's like you have to physically do it yourself at least once or twice before it actually burns into memory like if you just like watch a bunch of videos to like get ready for an event and then like and and like in your head like like have like no like you, you know what to do in certain situations but like when they actually come up like very often you're gonna like still do the wrong thing until once you've until you've unless you've like actually done it like in your own games in practice um mm-hmm. and so obviously i don't say that to say like that but you just watch a bunch of videos or, or like don't play I, i'm using it as a general concept to whoever like just generally um I, I feel like the way that came out sounded bad that's not what i meant but just, yeah, but, okay. just what I mean, <laughs> but just in general um yeah like i think it's just very important to like go through the motions just like yourself with just every card and every interaction and like Specifically against like the specifically against like, like the most pop whatever like the most popular decks are at the time, um, but like assuming like you you know have a reasonably limited amount of time to like play test, I do think like I don't know. I mean, I, I think 
No, no, no. That's it. Just practice. Like, I don't really have like. I feel like there aren't there aren't really shortcuts. At least in the modern game, there just aren't. But yeah, just practice as much as you can. Um, sp it's, oh, I will say that. Okay, specifically, like I said, against like the meta decks, because a lot of people play like with their friends. Like with the time they do have, they'll just they'll, they'll play casually. But like, a lot of times your friends aren't always playing like the good decks, and it's like if you're gonna like use that time that you have, just go on DB and play against or like. Or at least just go with your friend on DB and just build like the meta decks and just practice against each other because it's it's just the most important thing is learning the interaction specifically like with the cards that you're going to be seeing uh, and yeah like just I, I don't I'm just rambling but yeah, yeah. most of that's common sense but sorry yeah. I'm good. like I don't play DB because I'm stuck in low ranked and I don't have the time to get out of it yeah. Um, plus like DB is just like very painful for me. There's just a lot of people that ruin my day like I don't know how many times I've rage quit out of frustration so that's why I'm like okay and I have like a couple of people I can hit up to play with but like they might be like busy like I play with Walter a lot um okay. so like that's good because he's like an actual good player um but that's like a challenge is because I don't have a testing circle um like I don't have a team or anything like that so yeah. I got it that's that's hard then. That's hard. I don't know. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I guess at that point, I'd say like. I mean, it's funny because rated. Like you made a really good point about rated. It's like it's it's so valuable. I actually, I'm actually a believer that like high ranked like rated is the best testing you can get because it'll be a mix of primarily meta along with like some tier two and some tier three, and just like there's really good players, and but but to get to that point through like the low ranked. It takes so long, and the low rank DB people are so bad and annoying that it's like, I, it's, it's <laughs> like it, it, unless you can like commit the time to like to grind all the way up to like at least mid rank, it's like I agree, it's not it's not worth it. I don't I don't I don't blame you there at all. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't know. Like I think if I could, like I know it's I disclaimer i know this is not allowed so i'm not saying i'm gonna do it but hypothetically if i could borrow someone's account and just play in the ranked that would be like way that would just be amazing but i know that's against the rules so i'm not condoning it i'm just saying hypothetically that would be awesome hit me up in my dms okay just kidding that's against the rules <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. just kidding i don't know i'm assuming it's against the rules um I know there are a lot of players who do that. Uh, I don't know. I guess I don't know if it's technically against the rule or not, but I will say that is something that's done. Um, oh. <laughs> but Oh, in that I... case, I am not joking. Give me your accounts. <laughs> all of you. Give me all of your accounts now. <laughs> no, we, me and my friend Brad, we, we, we do that. We, we share. But um, the uh, I, I, uh, I will say, though, you did make a good point before about, you know, it's rough. It's hard when you don't have a testing circle. That is probably the biggest thing. Just if you, like, try to find one just for any player who like doesn't have one like yeah that's a big thing it's, it's hard if you don't but if you don't you almost have to grind db and go through the miserable low rated people but anyway i i yeah, yeah you're, you're damn you're that's that's rough but yeah like huh. i would go to locals a lot but i can't go to locals right now one because i'm really mad at my locals and two like they're not playing with the i'm mad at my locals uh they're just not handling a situation in a way that I think is correct. So I'm just not going oh. until they change. And then they're not playing the new cards, obviously, because they're not out yet. But I've just been practicing new format because I want to do well at YCS Minneapolis. Yeah, no, that's 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 good. Uh, there, someone, my friend asked me yesterday. He was like, "Are we going to regionals this Sunday? Because we have regional like in our state. That's like an, only like an hour away, and like oh. it, we." We were like, oh, regional's cool. And then we were, but we were like, it's old format. So like, objectively speaking, like it's more val valuable for us to just like use that day to just test new format on DB rather than and, like just skip the regional just to test for a mini. Yeah. That's like, yeah, definitely. But so yeah, I wouldn't be one, I wouldn't be one locals right now either, to be honest. Um, locals is funny. Cause like in general, and, and this is aside from the comment about uh, current format versus new format, just like assuming it is the current format for whatever it is at the time period like going to locals in general it's like it's a lot of like at least half your matches are often going to be against like rogue and yeah. so that too you can arguably more efficiently use that time by just 
even even grinding deep, even if you're mid ranked on DB, just doing that is probably going to be more valuable to testing than the locals. Some locals is really good. Like there's one locals in my state that's like an hour away. That's like like almost everyone there plays meta, and it's great. And I highly like recommend like my friends in the area to go there because the lo- the closer locals is like ten minutes away, and everyone goes there. But like half the people there, they they don't. It's it's a lot more casual, and there's like a lot less meta. There's only like a few like meta players. And I don't go because it's just like it's you know it, it. I mean, I go sometimes to like see my friends, but for for like testing, it's it's more it's more efficient just to, to play and go on DB. Um, so you're doing the right thing by you know focusing on a new format because mini is going to be a very interesting format. A lot of stuff's going to change. Yeah, and then two weeks later is Pasadena, and a new set comes out. Like yeah. I don't even want to think about that because. That's gonna be nuts. I have yeah. not started testing for Pasadena yet. Uh, yeah. I have not. I I barely read the Shizu cards, but yeah. I've been told that they're gonna be very. It's gonna be a very very interesting event. So. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be nuts. So we'll we'll see what's up. But yeah. yeah, what's the best advice you've ever gotten? The best advice I've ever gotten, huh? That's an interesting question. Um, I don't know if I have a good answer for that. Um, I I can answer a slightly different question. I'd say the best thing I ever did to improve at the game. I wouldn't necessarily say it came from advice, but just like hanging out with like better players. Um, and like when I was a, so I'll th- I'm just I'm thinking of when I was a kid. I'm trying to think like I I don't. I can't really think of any particular instance. I'm trying to think of like what I did, let's say, to like improve at the game, maybe to answer that question. I'm thinking back to when I was a kid, and there was one player in particular who was like, I always looked up to him, and we uh, would play sometimes at locals in, in tournament, and like for like years we'd put we'd I'd see him at locals every week, and then finally like I asked him like, like or I think one day we were just there on like an off day, and there was no one else there, and he was like, you want to play? And I was like, sure, and we just started playing like a lot, like over and over, just like one on one, and just playing with him helped so like I probably I feel like I improved more in like a month playing with him than like a year of just going to locals and which oh. kind of goes in line with what I was saying before of just like it's just really important to play against like people who are good and who are playing and also who are playing like good decks versus just playing like focus focus your focus your testing don't just that's another thing I should add on to what I was saying before about how important testing is like focus your testing don't just like play for the sake of playing like not only play against good decks and make sure you're playing against good people, like I said, but also, like, think while you're playing about, like, think about your card choices. Think about, like, okay, what if this card was, like, a different card? Think about, like, what if, like, like go back and try a different line and go back and try another different line and, like, discuss it with your friend who you're playing against. Like, spend 40 minutes on one turn. Discuss all the options. Discuss, like, what if we were playing this instead of this? And, like, take the time to, like, discuss and think through all the options so that, like, next time the situation comes up you know them all and you know the best one to take um so don't just play like play like in depth and really like think think about everything you can yeah definitely i think that's really good advice because like if you're just going through the motions going to locals not really analyzing your plays like you're not really going to be growing very fast if at all like exactly One thing I learned a lot from was, like, watching my replays. It's just a very time-consuming thing to do. Um, Yes. But, like, you know, it's all... Well, it's better if, like, someone watches them with me. um, Yeah. And, like, Replay watching is... Yeah, like, that's, like, that's... I I hate doing it just because, like, I don't know why. I I, I always get, like... uh, But but, uh, it is a really good thing to do. That is a really good thing to do. Um... I just I'm always like oh, I want to want to play again I want to play again but but no uh, reviewing your own replays is like really really good because that that's not that's the thing if you're if it's like a match where like let's say you were in a tournament match or like it was in rated and you didn't have the time to think through all the options like go back and like do exactly that like review the replay and go through all the options um if you weren't able to at the time um another thing I'll I'll kind of it's kind of in the same vein but like a little different and this one this one's I'd, I'd like to think this is one that like. I do that I feel like a lot of players don't do because I feel like everything else we've talked about is kind of like common sense that most players do in terms of like testing and reviewing and stuff but I like to do this okay I like to sit down um with like two decks I'll build if I have if I have to I'll you know I'll print proxies if I don't own the cards and like I'll play against myself um okay. or in DB I'll 
uh, or like I, I'll use like an alt and like I'll play against myself on DB. Um, and that's another great way to like, you can take as much time as you want to think through all the options because there's, there's, no, there's not even another person with you. Like you can literally just sit there for like, and that's where I often have actually taken like 30, 40 minutes on one turn to literally think through like every single possibility. And like, right, there, there's also like, I feel like in, in, in anything, like when you're communicating with another person, like X amount of time is like lost to like verbally communicating the thought. But like when you're simply with yourself, like you can cover like even more ground in like X amount of time than you can when you're actually communicating with another person. So like if you're all, like, I feel like this, I guess like only works if you are experienced enough to really be able to see it, see all the like plays. But like, if you are like, just, just to sit there and like, just literally in your own head think like, I don't know. I, I feel like some of the best testing I've ever done is playing against myself just with two decks or with two accounts. And like, I'll, I like to do a lot of repetitions. So I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna do, like, I'll sit down with two decks and I'll just play like the same matchup like 20 times, like let's say 20 singles, like 20 singles with me going first or with like deck one going first, 20 singles with deck two going first and then see like, okay, which deck won more math, like one more games. To, if I wanna see like which deck has a better matchup between two decks, like that's something I'll do too. Just like repetition testing. Um, because like, um, shoot, I was about to say a thought that I, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of times, like, it's hard to actually find people to, like, even if you have a testing circle or, like, a good testing partner, a lot of people don't necessarily want to actually do, like, the number of repetitions it actually takes to really, like, figure, determine whether or not a card is good or, like, which deck has a better matchup or, like, whatever. Um, So, like, sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'll literally just play against myself for, like, hours, like, the same, like, the same matchup over and over or, like, just, yeah, I really, like, rep doing, rep like, repetitions. That's not. That's another principle I, I would say. Like to focus on, like just repetitions. Like, just do the same matchup over and over, or like, if you want to test a card to see if it's good, don't just try it in one or two games and decide whether you like it. Just try it over and over. Do the thing that you know you draw like a four a four card hand, put the fifth card in your hand, like the card you want to test, and just do games like that. Test a particular card and just do repetitions. Um, I feel like I'm rambling on like I, I'm I'm going from one thought to another, so I I apologize. But this is just like all just like I guess principles that I use when I test or like practice to like for efficiency or or whatever. But in any case, yeah, uh, I like to play against myself. <laughs> okay, cool, awesome. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I feel like I don't really know if I could play against myself because I don't think I like am good enough to be able to do that unless I like do a mirror match with Drytron then maybe I could play against myself but we all know how Drytron mirror matches go so it wouldn't be very productive <laughs> how um, do they go? I don't find me <laughs> uh, who goes first wins <laughs> that's pretty oh. much it uh, unless like you have like well I played against Blake I don't know his last name do you know Blake? Thunderbird? I, the kid from from New York yeah the the kid yep. yeah so <laughs> I played him in the quarterfinals at gamer's choice and okay. he was playing the pre-prep build and I was playing prep and the most interactive game Drytron game I ever had was I was going first and then I activate instant fusion and make millennium eyes and then I add off alpha and then okay. he activates scroll and I activate Millennium Eyes, and then he activates Orange Light, and then I activate Orange Light and discard Eva, and then I banish to get Diviner, and I go full combo, and he has two cards on hand, and it was very funny. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. So that's fun. The, the games were like, your opponent resolves three hand traps, and then you have like a hand trap in your hand, and you're just like, it's, <laughs> it's always... Yeah, but, um... Yeah, I remember, like, I just saw the light go out of his eyes, because, like, like, he seemed happy, but, like, I was, like, very focused, I was, like, very nervous, because I was, like, why am I doing well? I don't know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And he seemed happy, and I was, like, oh, okay, we'll see what's up. And then he, like, activated the draw with such confidence, and I was, like, oh, no. You're about to get rejected! Orange light, orange oh. light, banned! <laughs> But he's a good kid. I like to tease him about how I yeah, beat Blake, him. <laughs> Blake, Blake's a really good player, too. Blake, Blake's, a, Blake's, a, Blake's a very good player. I know. When I told Cody, because, like, I was updating Cody at the event. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I played against this guy. Yeah, I played against this guy. And I was like, yeah, I played against this guy named Blake. And I beat him. And he was like, you beat Blake? And I was like, 
yeah, I mean, he's just a kid. <laughs> like, is that surprising? And he's like, Blake's a really good player and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he, Blake, Blake is a good player. Yeah. He's but... like, I think the first time I played him was in 2017 at an ARG. We played in Top Cut at an ARG. It was during Draco Zoo format. And uh, Draco, it was like in August, July, everyone was playing Pure Zoo. But then by August, like, everyone like had kind of moved over to Draco Zoo. And then he came up with a Pure Zoo build with and he and three friends played it and they all they all four of them made top sixteen. There's like two hundred people at the event, something like that, and like all four of them made top sixteen. And then he oh, ended wow. up winning. He knocked on top sixteen and he won. It was a, I forget what the what it was, but they were playing like a something that was a tech. And like he came up with it. And like yeah, he he's 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 a good deck builder and a, and a good player. He he ended up getting first. I think oh I think it was I think they were the first to ever play uh it was the first time a pointer of the Red Lotus had ever really seen play. And they were all siding three, which had no one had really done before, and it was really hard. And at the time, it was uh, when Lotus first saw play in 2017, it was ruled that the card stays banished until the following end phase because of, like, a discrepancy in the text. Oh. Um, yeah, so, right. What, the, the original reason a pointer saw play was because it, it lasted for two turns. And then, like, Konami, like, clarified the ruling, and they're like, no, it comes back at the end phase. And then people stopped playing it. And then years oh. later, everyone started. Then years later, people started playing it again, and got it, ended up getting limited. But at the time, yeah, it, like it had never seen play before. And then it, it they played it, and it was insane because it lasted two turns. And that was that was Blake's tech. Um, that was the first time I played him. Oh, wow. yeah, I'm with you, I think. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, do you get nervous when you play? Um. Hmm. I don't know if nervous is the right word. I definitely get like adrenaline. Like I get, I definitely get like I guess what you would associate. I guess what what one would associate with a feeling of anxiety. But like I don't. It it's more like I don't feel it in the game as nerves to, the, to, to in the sense of like 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 oh shoot I'm on tilt I'm like I'm like messing up because I'm like nervous. It's more just like for me that helps me focus. Like if I, it, when I play casually, if I if I can't get into that state. It's harder. I feel like it's really hard to like focus and play well for me. Like I need to be in that state of like stress in order to like focus and really do well. Um, I I guess like so I don't know. That's interesting because I've heard from other players, a lot of players that like they get ner like if they get nervous, they can't play well, and so they try to stay like chill and like go like and do what they can to like stay calm and take it chill. But I feel like if you do that, you just, like it's hard to really for push yourself to focus and really think everything through to the point of like playing optimally if you're not at least somewhat stressed. So I don't know. There's probably like a balance in between, but I'm not sure where it is or how to like initiate that state. Huh. Yeah. Cause a lot of like myself included, but a lot of people that follow me talk about getting really nervous while playing in tournaments and like, we don't really know how to overcome that anxiety hmm. um, type of a thing. I don't know. I I guess just like I don't know. I don't know. I have I have I don't have any advice for that. I feel bad. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay. That's kind of nice to know someone like doesn't struggle with it though. That's like, I guess like the, good. yeah. I I think the key is to figure out how to how to take that like stress and turn it into focus. But I don't know how. Like I I I don't know, I don't know how to like describe to someone else how to do it. But I, I would tell all the I would tell all the players who do feel that nerves like, don't be disappointed that you feel that anxiety. Like, just keep in mind that like one day, hopefully you'll figure out a way to like you know turn it into something positive. Don't wish it away. Embrace it. Right. And I, I don't know that, but I don't know I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to like tell someone how to do that. Who knows? Who knows? I do like the sentiment though. Don't push it away. Embrace it. Become one with your anxiety, and then you will overcome it. It sounds like I don't know. I should say grasshopper at the end of it. I don't really uh, seal the I feel deal. Like, I'm pretty sure there's, probably, there's like definitely like some podcaster who like said that. There's probably definitely like a hundred podcasters who said that in like <laughs> other contexts. But yeah, no, I, I think it applies. I think it applies. Okay. Um, yeah. What makes the difference between a good player and a great player? The player that spent the most time preparing for the event and truly took the time to uh yeah like you could be you could be a real well that's like i guess that's like not quite the, the exact question that's being asked but i would say like people sit that go to events and they think like oh my god he's like so and so like he's like insane but like and they see the name and they get nervous like oh my god i'm playing against like this like insane name like he's, he's gonna I'm, I'm gonna lose but 
you know, you could be a really, really, really big name player up sitting down across from you. But if they haven't, if they haven't been playing recently, like, and you have, you could be like, you could think you're a worse player. But if you've spent more time practicing in the current format and you've really been grinding, and they haven't, you're favored. Um, so like, don't get discouraged and think like, like, oh, I'm not that good. Like, I'm not gonna do that good at this event. Like, if you put the time in, especially in the modern game, like, if you put the time in, like, you can do, you can really do well. So, so don't, don't, uh, don't focus, don't focus on like, I'm good, but I'm not great. Just, just look at it as you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put more time in than them, and I'm gonna like, you know, it's really, especially in the modern game. This is okay. This is gonna, I'm gonna transition to a like slightly different topic, but relates to what I was just saying. Cause this is something I wanted to say today that, that I, at some point, um, I think the modern game of Yu-Gi-Oh is in a really, really good spot. Um, I think like what Konami's been doing with card design over the last like couple of years, but progressively over time, but like especially in the last couple of years, the the complexity of the game has gotten so like great in like terms of like what they're doing with card design, like the way they're making like they're making the cards so complicated that like it's really annoying, but it really makes the game to where it rewards the player who's put the time in to like just put the most time in because the, like the decks nowadays are so complicated and you know what I'm talking about like every card has four effects right not not every card but every card has three to four effects like if you if you add up the number of effects in your deck it's probably like like 100 right your opponent's deck probably has 100 effects in it and like if you just think about the number and like all right 100 times 100 you think about all the possible interactions between each card in your deck and each card in their deck that's hundreds of interactions like we've gone to the point of the game where you cannot just like a good player cannot just sit down and intuitively play a deck well like you have to put the time into practice a deck and that's how and then like the and that what that means is like the player who's the player who's put more time in and who's like really worked worked hard like toward it is going to do better um and i think that's really good uh, i think like so so there's been a lot of complaints about what they've been doing with card design in terms of like the complexity of like I think downside is it's creating a big barrier of, to entry for, for the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because if you've never played Yu-Gi-Oh! at all, like, I cannot imagine sitting down and trying to, like, learn not just the basic mechanics, but also then, like, all the effects in a deck while you're still learning the basic mechanics. I think that's just insane. So it's, it's creating a barrier a barrier to entry to the game, which I think is possibly a bad thing for the long-term, like, like size, of the, size of the player base, possibly. But in terms of, like, high-level competitive play, I think it's really good. It's really, like... the like I said, I think the play like in a game right now, the player who's like put put most time in and knows their deck the best is really favored. Uh, in other words, I think variance is less of a because of how. In other words, like that makes technical play really really important and variance a lot lessened compared to in prior years. Um, I think the game is the most skilled, like very very skillful right now. Is it would be a really concise way of, of saying what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. Um, that's just something I wanted to say today because I, I I think that's something really good about the game right now. I just want I, I really like where it's at. Um, like it's like Terra Element Mirrors, for example. It's like especially because like with Terra in particular, like a lot of the effects play on the opponent's turn, and like the Bistid cards too. They're, they're they're printing so many archetypes now that like let you play on the opponent's turn to where it's it's even more interactive. And there's like there's chain links in Terra where like you're resolving a five chain link chain, like two of the chain links are theirs and three are yours, and it's it's their turn. And then like you resolve everything, and then there's like four more triggers that triggered in the prior chain that now you're building a new chain, and it's like, it's really interactive, and it's so like it's so intricate that like, you you forget one effect and like you're tight, and it's like it it just I don't know I really like how where technical play is at right now. Um, the other big downside to that is, uh, I hate this so much because the game is so good right now, and like the the like with technical play, but the problem is, it doesn't like. The way Konami's making a game with card design and and how complicated it is conflicts with the inherent restrictions of IRL play with time, because you don't like most like when I play like in like uh, tournament matches on DB, the best matches can go two hours. Like when both of yeah. you are truly like when it's two good players and you're really sitting there like and you're both playing to your the, to your like your best and really taking the time to think through all the options and the plays and like. Playing, both players are playing their decks to their best potential. Those games, especially like sometimes all three games of the, of the match, or at least two, can can be really good long grind games. And sometimes the match can take two hours. 
I would say the average is like at least an hour. And yeah. IRL, we don't get to actually play those games out. We don't get to actually like see that like beautiful like result of where the game's at in terms of technical play because the game is just going to end because of time at some point. And so it's yeah. like, I, I, that's the extravaganza this past week and it really made me realize that because I've been playing Tear in like online tournaments for a couple weeks, the last couple weeks, like, and, and like the deck is so cool. Like I said, it's so interactive. The, the mirrors are so like good. But then like I, I played the remote extravaganza and so many of my games just went to time and ended by like, like we'd have a really good 30 minute game one and then it'd be like, oh, well, now it's just gonna be a coin flip because whoever's someone's gonna be up in life in game two and then it's gonna come down to time and yeah. so be, ugh, it just sucks but there's no real good solution to that because like y you know the, the, the issue like it's, it's not just the fact that the oh the, the time will suck because oh the met the phase ends it's like well what's the alternative because again like we we're saying that like or like i'm saying the, the reason the game's so good right now is because like some of those games are, are so skillful and so interactive that they can go two hours well that's not realistic. No matter what the time rules are, we can't allow two hour matches in person. Just there's just logistical restrictions that prevent that. So it's like, no matter what the time rules are, it's it's still gonna be the same thing. We, we're not gonna be able to really see the beautiful result of like those really long interactive games. So, um, but so it's a weird it's weird. Like I think the game's really good right now because of card design and, and where the game's at. But it's, it, unfortunately, like because of like the restrictions of of you know time like IRL, it, it doesn't really it, it's it kind of sucks at the same time but um yeah, yeah i know exactly I what you mean because like time is just such a like i think time is we have to have it like because we can't have yes. tournaments going till like 5 a.m um exactly. but it's like very hard because it's like for me i i do take time to think um right and like you know like if i know a deck well like when i played draytron i never went to time like, it was such a rare occurrence okay. for me to go to time. But, like, now I play tier, I go to time all the time. Right. Um, and, like, I, I do think that's, like, not just me being slow. I think it's a function of the deck. But, like, yes, you know, exactly. I'm not a fast player. And, like, with time, there's so much pressure. People are always rushing you. And I can't concentrate. And then I end up messing up because my opponent is telling me to play faster even when I'm not taking a while because they know our game's going to go to time right. because we're doing a tier mirror. And it just leads to a lot of, like, hostility, and it's not fun. Like, I really like the deck tier. I haven't liked a deck, like, since, like, Drytron since, for, until I got to tier. Then I was like, wow, I really like this deck. Like, I felt like playing Yu-Gi-Oh! again. Um, and, like, it's like I can't even, like, go enjoy this game because exactly. of this time rule. You know? Exactly. It's like the deck is so, well, arguably, I guess you, you fun, it's, it, it, but also just like skillful and like it, it, it's, it does so much, but you can't, like, you don't get to like, you don't get to finish your game because of time. And yeah. I, I know, like you're saying, that was a perfect example. It just, it, it yeah, it sucks. But so, yeah, it's, it's weird because like the, the, the way they're designing decks is so good, but it's like time makes it so, like, it doesn't work with time. So it's almost like they're going to need to start making, like, cards less complicated, I feel like, in order to, like, fix this issue of, like, so many... Because, like, while it is like this, so many matches are just going to be being decided by time. And yeah. that's not just... That's just a bad thing. Um, yeah. So, but... I think a compromise is to just make the rounds longer. Like, I think 50 minutes is reasonable, because magic takes 50 minutes per round. And right. And... Magic isn't as complicated as Yu-Gi-Oh, I think, I'm assuming. I don't know. I don't think. Yeah. So, it's like, why like why do we have 10 minutes less than a game that's, like, less complicated than Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, def I mean, definitely the best solution is to, to add as much time as we can, given the physical restrictions. But, um, like, remote duels are 50 minutes. And I still this weekend with Terra was running into like time so much. Like 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 I said, the, some of the game ones in the mirror would go like thirty minutes, and then like if we went to game three, just we we were gonna hit time. There's nothing. There's, there's not no matter how fast we played, we were gonna hit time. And yeah. like even with fifty minutes, but I'd love to see IRL play that. If, if I could have like one change made to the game, one thousand percent, my answer would be I'd love. I, I I want time to be added as much as possible. I think I don't think I don't think more than fifty minutes would be realistic. But I think if we could do, if we could, 
I know this is this is, this is this is speaking purely hypothetically because this would not just be feasible. This really just wouldn't be feasible. But sixty minute rounds, I think, would be like like really good because mm. then I think a very high majority of most games would get to finish within the allotted time and would not go to the time yeah. rules. Um, but like that's also like the average of what even like the good like like online on DB when we're like thinking everything through and playing really well it's like it goes like 60 minutes it's like the cap i feel like for the most matches so yeah. that would be great but 60 would be pushing it i do hope that well i'm glad they at least raised it to 45 because every five minutes is better than nothing so i'm, I'm glad yeah. that i hope i hope they stick with that yeah yeah 45 i'm much happier with um because i also feel like you know there's more disputes like when time is shorter that if you just gave the extra yes. five or ten minutes the games would resolve naturally right um, like the ironic that exactly like that's the ironic the ironic thing about time is that like having with with the new time rules and the and the shorter less minutes in theory it, it makes the rounds go faster but it actually doesn't because it le like the more the shorter it is the more it's going to lead to dispute like the more disputes there's going to be like you just said and the more disputes there's going to be the longer it's going to take because the disputes end up taking like 20 minutes anyway so it's like if they just had 60 minute rounds and there were no disputes it would actually like it would be it would in theory take the same amount of time and would be better for everybody um but i guess the downside is if there is like if there is one dispute right and you have a 60 minute round and then the dispute still takes 20 minutes then you're looking at an 80 minute round so i guess that that's probably that was probably konami's like calculation of like well if the disputes are going to take X amount of time, no matter what, we still have to shorten the rounds, and the dispute's going to take the same amount of time anyway. Because if there's even one dispute, it's still going to happen. So I guess that was like the the reasoning. But I, I but I, I agree. I'd like to see more time and hopefully less disputes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Nice. Um, this is the conclusion <laughs> of the podcast. Is there anything else you want to add, or do you want to plug yourself if you coach or something like that? No, no, I, I've been playing. I've been planning to get into coaching. I've had a lot of players like ask me about it, who wanted to work with me, but I haven't yet. So I, I'll just say, uh, my team, you know, Luxury Gaming. You know, we have, you know, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay, guys, thank you. Please go to my Patreon, patreoncom Zarakon, and subscribe if you want the episodes right after they are aired. I post them on Fridays. We record on Thursday nights on Twitch, twitchtv do list. We're on Amazon. We're on Spotify. We're on. E Wait, are we on Amazon? Actually, I don't think we're on Amazon, but we're on a <laughs> lot of things. Like, just Google it, and you'll find us. Uh, me, I guess. I don't have a code. Are you Walmart Marketplace? That's the question. Oh, <laughs> well, let's worry about my cat food. So someday, someday. <laughs> All right. We're going to have our duel. If you want to catch it, go to YouTube.com slash Comic. And I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.